Hello, my name is Mike, and welcome to another episode of Mike's Horsepower Garage. As some of you might have noticed, I've changed the name of the channel a little bit. I'm not going to do any more of the gun content, it just doesn't get a lot of views. The majority of you are here for the automotive content, so I'm going to give you more of what you want and focus on that. And today i got a great one for you. I'm going to change the spark plugs in my 2010 Porsche Panamera S with the 4.8 liter V8. Now this procedure is exactly the same for all first gen Porsche Panameras from 2010 all the way to 2016, including the 3.6 liter V6 and the 4.8 liter V8 and the turbo models as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Now this spark plug change is relatively simple. The only difficult things are obviously the back two cylinders back there. It's a little tighter. Everything else is pretty straightforward. And on this side, the driver's side, the only difficult one you can see back there, we got that screw right there to get off. And it's a little tough to get the coil. You can see that red outline there. That's the coil that we got to pull out of the cylinder first. And it's a little tight, but this side's not that difficult. Moving on to the passenger side, we have an extra step. We have to loosen and get this torque arm out of the way. Now with the back cylinder, you can see everything, but once again, it's rather tight with these AC and vacuum lines. But I think we'll be able to get to it without having to remove too much. Now as for spark plugs, there's really only one available for this, unless you want to mess with uh, heat ranges, you can use iridium plugs. But the only plug basically is this Bosch. And it has this kind of cage going around the electrode. Four points there. Pretty neat looking plug. Uh, one little side note on these, you notice they have the blue writing with the blue branding. If you get these from Porsche, they're going to come in a box with Porsche branding and they'll have green writing. But the part number is exactly the same, the one that's printed here on the plugs. So these run for a set of eight $40 delivered. And if you're going to get them branded from Porsche with the green stripe, they're going to cost you $23 a plug. So they're exactly the same thing. So it's up to you how much you want to spend. But I've been using these and I've had no issues whatsoever. Here's a collection of the tools that you'll need to remove the spark plugs on your Porsche Panamera. These right here are just going to be for the torque arm. You're going to need a, a Torx 50 with a security socket. One that has the hole in it. Both of the screws are a Torx, but one of them has the little pin in the center. So you're going to need a T50 security. You're also going to need 16 millimeter deep socket and an extra 3 8 ratchet. And that's just for the torque arm. Now for getting to the spark plugs. If your hands are small enough, you won't need this. But on those back two cylinders, once I get those um, cap screws loose, I like to hold on to this so I don't accidentally drop them in. So you might need some long reach needle nose pliers. You're definitely going to need a, a 5 8 spark plug socket. And you're going to need several extensions to get the job done in the back. So you're gonna to have to drop it in with this and then add this and then the one with the torque arm you're gonna need longer. So you're gonna need several extensions like this here. Um, you're also gonna need this an external Torx, something new. Another 3 8 ratchet. When you do the torque tube you're gonna need both at the same time. And this tool here which makes everything extremely easy. You're gonna need a Torque 30 to get the covers off but this is an easy red quarter inch ratchet one side has the quarter inch ratcheting end and the other side takes the bits and it's magnetic this tool because of the low profile made the job extremely easy compared to the first time I did it I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description with the part number for the easy red and the Bosch plugs as well Go ahead and remove the plugs, but be very careful with the clips. Mark it up there. All right. Next, we got these, I guess they're kind of screws. They take an external Torx. It's like an E12, it's called. Very, 
unusual looking screw. Now Porsche recommends that these be changed every single time you uh, remove them. I don't really see the purpose in that. I mean, they're not torqued down hardly at all. I think it's only like five foot pounds of torque. They're very light, but uh, these have only, these are probably the third set that's been on the car. I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse them. But just to let you know, all hardware pretty much on a Porsche is considered one-time use. So it's recommended that you replace these. Let's go ahead, get this one going as well. Very gentle. These coils have been changed, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just concerned with spark plugs. There we go. Nice. Yeah. Ooh, baby, that is pretty roasted. So nothing wrong with changing them a little bit early. I'm gonna do two at a time, so as to not leave everything open. The chance of stuff falling in. And also, I don't want to mix up any wires, even though you can't really do it. They only run pretty much one way. Do these two, change it, button it up, and then move on to the back two. And yeah, they looks pretty much the same as the other one. And that porcelain is gone. Now I like to use a little bit of anti-seize. Pretty much always when I install spark plugs. I looked online, there's a lot of mixed comments and opinions. Uh, they're saying if it's coated like this, silver, and this is a coated plug and you don't need to do it only on like the black plugs because they're just painted. Some people say don't put any at all. It could foul the plug and run the plug. I'm not putting an excessive amount, as you can see. Just a thin little layer. It just makes it easier for threading in and out. You know, like I said, I always follow the service intervals. And you change your plugs a lot. I feel like it just uh, helps save the threads. From my years of experience, I've never had an issue with it. And with these type of Bosch plugs, there's no gapping to be done. As you can see, there's really nothing you can adjust. They don't go over the top. Just be careful. Feed it down the tube. Pretty much only one way it could go. So make sure you thread it by hand all the way until it seats. You saw in there, there was that little washer, that crush washer. That's what we're doing right now. So right there, I'm at the washer. There, stopped. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is that crush washer there. You can see it has, well, the camera will focus on it. It has multiple layers to it. And it's designed to compress down. You can see it there. There's like two kind of parts. So that's what I do by hand. I tighten it down to that. Porsche recommends 22 foot-pounds of torque. And if you use anti-seize, they say that, that you have to torque it less. But uh, I've always just gone by feel of that crush washer. So now we have it down by hand. And we're just going to smush it until it seats. There, you can feel it. And right now it's seated. I just give it a little extra, just like that. There, and that's all you need to do. For the anti-seize, I'm using a Permatex copper, which is a higher temp. And like I said, I'm not putting a whole lot, just a thin layer in there to help lube it up. That even looks a little thick in that one spot to me. There we go, wipe off the excess. Get our cables out the way. Really had no indication that the plugs were in that bad a condition. I 
Okay, so by hand, as far as you can go, there you go, crush washer. And now we'll flatten the washer. Oh, that's it there. That's it. That. Just like that. There's two down, six more to go. There we go. Oh yeah, every one of them looks the same. Roasted. All right, just a little thin layer, some anti-seas. Oh, that new one back in its home. I can't wait to drive it after I get these all changed. I had no idea it was performing just fine. Well, at least as far as I know, I mean, no hiccups, no misfires, no codes. Just time for a spark plug change. Battery cable out of the way. That's it. There you go. That tool's already paid for itself. So the problem I'm having, you can see right there, is one of the battery cables for the charging station up front here, even though the battery's in the back, runs right over top of the coil, won't allow me to get it out, which is going to make it hard to get the spark plugs in and out too. So this is where it's attached to right here, and I think I've come up with an easy solution. We just need some movement out of it. So I'm just going to loosen where it's mounted without disconnecting any of the electronics. And hopefully that gives me the movement I need to be able to get to that last one. Well, that was a little bit of play. All right, well, I got my clearance. I was wrong. I had to remove this clip. Uh, you can see it here. It slid onto this aluminum post right here. And on the inside of here, there's a little release. So I slid that out. Now that'll get this bracket out of our way and we can get the coil and spark plug out with ease. Slow going, but uh, just be patient. Oh. Extension. Well, that setup made it work. <laughs> Press that back down. Hook it up. There we go. Now we got to get the little screw in there. Ah, this tool has definitely made the job a lot easier. Highly recommend you getting something similar to this. Biggest thing is just this clearance right here. Such a smaller head than other ratchets. Finish reinstalling these bits. The charging block tighten back down. Don't over tighten. That's good enough. And now for this one, I need to slide it back on. Yeah, it just has that one little clip there at the end. Huh? Okay, that's in position. There it is. Ah, probably should have left that loose. We'll see if that comes back to haunt us. Just to make life a little easier on myself, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this up. I shouldn't have tightened it just yet. I realize now that I need that cable loose. Just one more thing. That last screw in there. Okay. There, that should help me. Here we go.
nut back here. Make sure you don't drop it. Alright, well this hose right here, simply two tabs on the side that push and release it. I believe this is just vacuum. And they seem to be hung up on something that I can't see. There we go. Oh yeah, just as roasted as the other side. We got the new one. A little, little bit of anti-seize. <laughs> Gotta wrestle this thing through. I got the oxygen sensors. Got this wire. There we go. That one just come up right through that way. Yep, just like the others. Okay, last thing to do is to put the torque arm back on. 
and put those hoses back in the right place. Now this nut is recessed back here. Make sure you don't lose it. Alright, torque specs on this one, which is the aluminum bolt, says it's 15 foot pounds and then 90 degrees. I don't have a torque wrench that goes that low, so I just went by feel. This one here says it's 46 foot pounds. This is a steel bolt. Okay, now we got this hose to put back on. Simple click, and then we got this one out of its bracket and snap that. Everything's back on. Well, there you have it. Changing the spark plugs on a first generation Porsche Panamera. Took me less than an hour. I had to get some specialty tools to get started, and of course that real slim profile Easy Red ratchet made the job a lot easier. But it's something that's relatively easy, actually one of the easier spark plug changes I've ever done. Now Porsche recommends that you change the plugs every four years or 25,000 miles, whichever comes first. Now when I first bought the car, um, I had a misfire right around 24,000 miles, but the plugs had never been changed. They were well over 10 years old at the time. So I went ahead and changed those and I changed all the coils and I had no issues. And I have no issues now. It's just that I'm getting close to, I have about 49,000 miles close to the 50,000 uh, for the change. And the car, I've driven it pretty hard. It's been to an autocross day. So the plugs were in really bad shape. The car ran fine, but as you can see when I took them out, they were pretty rough. Well, thank you for joining me for another episode of Mike's Horsepower Garage. Please like this video, smash that subscribe button, and browse my channel for my other content. Thanks again for watching.